Howdy Thrill Seekers, this is Professor Mark Toonery from cartooneyville.com with another demo for you on desktop cartooning. Today we're going to look at cleaning up a character in Adobe Illustrator. And uh, one of the things you might want to consider about using Adobe Illustrator to uh, do your digital illustrations is the fact that it is vector art. Vector art is really nice because it's a series of points. Uh, rather than sort of a mosaic of pixels like you get in Photoshop where you get a bunch of tiny little pixels. Uh, but the problem is as soon as you enlarge them, uh, naturally you see the, uh, the pixels themselves and they look boxy and pixelated. So the advantage of using vector illustration to create your artwork means that you can scale it up or down uh, and also later on, it gives you a better idea of how programs like Adobe Animate work, which are a terrific way to do your 2D animation. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, so we're going to start off pretending or supposing that we have uh, a letter-sized uh, image. And, you know, of course, I've got it under my regular, uh, you know, recent items or, you know, you can click letter size. Uh, you have the option to work with points, but I really prefer working with inches here in Illustrator. Okay, so getting started here in Illustrator, I'm going to uh, work with a letter eight and a half by 11. You see it's also under my recent items, but I'm going to use, I'm going to go ahead and name this cartoon trace. Uh, eight and a half by 11. You can change this to inches or pixels or points, feet, yards, millimeters, centimeters, you know, whatever you want. But most of the time, um, eight and a half by 11 inches is fine. So we will go ahead and hit create. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is place our image. I'm not going to open it. Uh, I'm actually going to place it, which means I'm just going to place a copy of it in my, um, my file. So I'm going to go up to File, Place. OK, when you place an image inside Illustrator, it's a better idea to have it set up already in the same folder that you're going to be working with your Illustrator file, because it's sort of like a linked file. Uh, and if you don't do that, and if you decide you're going to move it later, uh, it'll lose that link. And that becomes important, especially later on if you start using programs like Adobe After Effects or um, perhaps Adobe Premiere. So that's an important principle to learn. Make sure uh, you don't go moving your linked files around after you place them or import them. So I'm going to go to File, Place. And as you see, I've already put, I've already set up a Felix Trace folder here on my desktop. And so I'm going to place this Felix file. And it's really big and it's really clunky looking and that's sort of the whole point here. So you'll be able to see the difference between uh, the artwork that we trace and um, the result. So uh, this is obviously, this is a, uh, a raster or bitmapped image. You see if I zoom in, I'm using Command Plus because I'm on a Mac. If you're on a PC, use Control Plus, of course. Control plus to zoom in, control minus to zoom out. So if I zoom in, you can see all these awful little pixels. The closer you zoom in, the worse the resolution gets. And uh, I'm actually using Felix the Cat for a reason. Usually when I do this, I use Mickey Mouse, but as we know, Mickey is a copyrighted character by the uh, House of Mouse. So, uh, I wanted to use a copyright free character. Now, Felix's early cartoons, I should point out, you know, those of us who are trying to exercise uh, copyright respect, Felix's early silent cartoons, most of those are copyright free. And you can check online to find out which ones those are. And this, this is one of the ones I found that was copyright free. There's also sort of an interesting point. Felix was actually the first image ever to be broadcast by television. So what we're gonna do now that we've got Felix placed in here, remember I didn't open, I placed, I went to File, Place. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure that my Layers tab is open, as you see here. And I'm gonna to go, to, and if you don't see it, just go to Window, Layers, very much like you would in Photoshop. 
And so I'm going to do a couple of things. Now, I'm going to, not going to double click on the name of the layer. I, I do want to rename it, but I'm going to do several things at once. I'm going to double click on the icon of the layer you see here in the layer tab. I'm going to rename that Felix Screenshot. Now, before I say OK, I'm also going to lock it so that I don't accidentally uh, move it when I'm tracing. And the other thing I'm going to do is go to dim images to 50%. You can put any number in there you like, but 50 is usually pretty good. Now, the reason I do that is you'll see as soon as I hit OK, it dims it down. So it's going to make it a little bit easier for me to see what I've traced and what I haven't. So uh, once I've got that done, I'm going to make a new layer just like I would in Photoshop. Uh, right next to the trash can and the layer is very similar to Photoshop. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to rename this uh, head. And just so you get an idea of how I'm going to organize things here is I'm going to do the head itself, this black part. I'm going to put it on one layer. I'm going to put his eyes on a layer by themselves. I'm going to put his mouth on a layer by itself and probably his nose and whiskers on separate layers as well. So I'm going to start off with the pen tool. The pen tool is really your real workhorse here in uh, Adobe Illustrator. And the, the nice thing about it is you can make just about any shape you want with a pen tool. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit further here. Again, I'm using Command Plus to zoom in on the Mac. So I'm going to start off with the shape here. So just so you know how the pen tool works, if you're not familiar with it, uh, if you just go click, 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 and then as soon as I want to close this, which is very important, you want to make sure your, your objects are closed. You see that little O that comes up next to the pen that tells you as soon as you click, it's going to complete the shape. So you see I just went click, 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 and I got corners. Now, the difference is if you click and drag, you see it gives you a nice, very nice vector curve. And where that curve goes, which direction and how sharp that is, is how far away you pull with these little handles that show up. The handles are these little uh, lines that have the circles on the ends that, uh, that you can see right now. So it might be a good idea just to practice with that just a second until you get ready to start actually uh, tracing the, the character's face. So, and that's what this is all about. It's not about making a finished piece of artwork in this case, although hopefully we will have a nice drawing of uh, Felix. But I'm going to uh, delete this. And uh, so hopefully this practice will give us a nice drawing of Felix the cat. So with the head, uh, I'm gonna start drawing. Now, one thing I'm gonna mention before I start drawing if you look over here down at the bottom of your toolbar, you see that I have uh, a fill and a stroke. If you remember in Photoshop, this is your foreground color and this is your background color. So remember that's a little different here uh, in Illustrator. Uh, any object you draw, you draw can have a fill and a stroke. Your default is white for the fill, black for the stroke. And if you ever want to change back to that, you can click on this little button here, the tiny little version of this larger one that says default fill and stroke, and that'll change it back to white fill black stroke. If you want to reverse those, you simply hit this swap fill and stroke below. Now at the moment, uh, even though uh, Felix's head is going to end up black, and when his eyes, of course, initially, they're going to be white, um, but what I want to do is I want to start off with a blank fill so that I can see what I'm tracing. Because at a certain point, when I start crossing over, it would fill in the shapes and I wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing. So uh, with the fill to the front, uh, you can change which one is to the front and which one is to the back by simply clicking on them. Uh, I need to uh, apply a no fill or none here that you can apply either to the fill or the stroke by clicking on it. Now, because fill is to the front, when I click on that, it's going to apply it to the fill. If, if the stroke had been to the front, I clicked on that, I would have white fill with no stroke. So hopefully you get the idea how that works. 
So now with a white fill and a blank stroke, I'm going to start drawing. And you can draw wherever you like. I'm going to start maybe right up here on Felix's ear. So I'm going to click here. And I'm going to click and drag here. Because see, there's a slight curve to his ear. Now, one of the things you want to do, see if I start trying to draw immediately, you see um, it's at that little point in his ear, it's a little, it's not quite the sharp curve we want. So I'm going to hit undo. And if you need to change something from a curve, if you need to change one of these points from a curve to a corner, you simply hold down the option key on your keyboard if you're on the Mac. And of course, that's the alt key on the PC. So I'm going to option click here and you see it changes to that little change direction point, which is sort of like the lesser than sign. So I'm going to option click on that very point and then click and drag, hold down the mouse and drag just like that. Okay. So again, I'm in another sort of back to myself into another corner. So once again, I'm going to option click here and come up and get that nice curve there on his ear. And again, because you know this is technically a curve, I need to change that to a corner too. So option click there. So hopefully you get the idea about how that works. So I'm gonna draw sort of behind because his, his eye is gonna overlap eventually. So I'm just gonna come down here and try to get that curve about right. Sort of kind of guessing where his, the edge of his cheek is here. So I can make this a nice, I don't have to option click there because I do want this to be a nice smooth curve down this way. Sort of approximating where his head probably is. Now I'll come over here to this cheek. I'm going to click and drag to get that out. All right. And if that doesn't look perfect, that's okay. This is going to be covered up anyway. But you can always come back. That's the nice thing about vector art is you can always come back and adjust these if they don't look quite right. If you later decide that, ooh, ugh, that's awful. I'm going to do something else there. So because this is such a short line, um, not so much because there's a change in direction, I'm going to option click here. It looks like he's got little whisker sort of cheek fluff there. So I'm going to option click there, there, come back out here. Maybe just drag that ever so slightly. And because that is a corner, I'm option clicking here. And now I, you could you could probably come here if you wanted to, but I think we're going to be safe coming all the way up here. I'm going to click and drag. You saw that little O or a little circle just before I changed them. So I'm going to, and, and this takes some getting used to. You might have figured this out already because it's almost like I've, I've heard it said on a boat. You know, if you want to go left, you have to turn right. Uh, you have to turn the rudder or the uh, on the the opposite direction that you want to go on the boat. So that can be a little. Uh, tricky at first but as I said this is all about practice and that looks pretty good to me okay so we got the main shape that we need there now um, if we want to we can go ahead and fill that black although I do see see uh, over here notice how it looks like his eye should probably be coming out over there I guess what's his eyebrow well, this is where I said, if, um, if you decide or, or suddenly notice that something's not quite right, you can still fix it. So I still have the pen tool selected. It looks like I might need an extra point here, at least one. So I'm going to float over. Notice as I float over the pen, as, as I get to that line and it gives me that little notation of path, changes to the plus sign. So that means I'm going to add a point if I click, which is exactly what I want to do. I'm actually going to do one just a little bit higher here because you see it sort of curves down. It looks like it comes out and then down. So I'm going to click one here and using the arrow key on my keyboard, I'm going to bring that out just a little bit. Then I'm going to add another point here just below the one I just added. And again, just using the arrow key, bring it up and maybe in just a tiny bit. So that's pretty good there. All right. So if all the others look pretty good, which I think they do, because as I said, some of this stuff's going to get covered up. Uh, I'm going to now, uh, let me see, that's his head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip these around because see, at the moment, I've got to fill, no fill, the black stroke. I, that's actually the opposite of what I want. So I'm going to flop those around and see there, now we've got that nice, crisp shape. As I said, that's the real advantage. You notice as I zoom in already, you can see the difference between this vector art that we've, that we've traced on the left. And over here on the right, you see the original image that was just a very low resolution screenshot, of course, of an old uh, public domain Felix cartoon. 
So this is why we do what we do. This also works well with logo design. And when I was working at a, a, a t-shirt shop back in the early 90s, uh, we had to do a lot of cleanup when people would bring us in business cards with logos that were just really small and they wanted them printed on a t-shirt. So we had, this was the best way to do it was to convert that scan or a, a screenshot into uh, this nice vector art. So in order to see the rest of Felix's head, I'm gonna hide the head. So actually I can see the facial features is what I really wanna see. So I'm gonna hide this head layer by clicking on the visibility, the, the little eyeball you see. And probably the next thing to do, uh, you know, you could do work pretty much any direction you want, uh, but I'm gonna make a new layer and I guess we'll go with, why don't we go ahead and do the mouth next. So I'm gonna make a new layer, double click to rename it and I'll call it mouth. In fact, what I probably should do is call this muzzle because his, his mouth you see is actually gonna be stacked on top of this other shape. So I'll call that muzzle hit return or enter to apply that. And again, start off with the pen tool. So I'll start off up here. As I said, you can start pretty much anywhere you want. So I'm gonna to click to make my first point there, come over by his, under his eye, click and drag down. And because this is gonna be covered up with his nose, we got a little bit of leeway here. So I'm just gonna click and drag slightly there. Click and drag there until we see that edge is nice and smooth on the upper right. Oh, and I should have made this, you see what's happening already. This is what I was trying to avoid. I should have actually reversed this, but it's not too late. While I'm still selected, I just, as long as I don't click anywhere else, I can come over here and swap my fill and stroke. Now we can see a little bit better what we're doing. So I'll click and drag around there. And you just, you know, the point is trying to find the fewest points is really how you want to do this and still get a nice smooth shape. Now this is probably gonna to be too high, but again, I'll show you how you can fix it after the fact. So come over here and I'm gonna click and drag just a tiny bit to smooth that out so, so I don't have a corner there. Come back up here. Now see so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this anchor point here so I can drag this handle down here and try to get that mouth just a little bit better. Great, or I should say his cheek really is what that is. So that looks pretty good, looks pretty good around here. I might smooth this out a tiny bit, just drag that up maybe, and maybe even drag this over just a bit. That's pretty good there, okay. So uh, since we want this to be white <clears throat> with a black outline, I'm gonna come back over here and take advantage of that default fill and stroke right now. So see, that's pretty much the shape we want. Now here's where we can talk just for a moment about uh, strokes uh, because uh, by default, it's gonna be one point, which might not be enough. So if you want to edit your strokes, come up here to window. Oh, it is hiding around here somewhere. It's, uh, see it's, oh, there it is right there. Excuse me, there's your stroke. So if you wanna make it thicker, you can by simply clicking on it here. That might be a bit much, but let me show you something else that's really neat with this. Uh, one of the things I like about the cartoons of the late 20s and the early 30s, they started using these really um, very, uh, very much like a brush stroke that would get thicker and thinner. So I'm gonna take this all the way back down to one just so I can show you this really neat trick that they've added in just the past few versions of uh, Illustrator. The width tool is really nice. So again, you need something that's already got a stroke on it for this to work. So I have a white fill with a, with a black stroke, as we see here. Over on the width tool, I'm gonna to come over here. And even if there's not a point, what I can do see is I can click to add a point. And then look at that, when I drag down, it actually adds that really nice thick and thin stroke. If you look at those uh, Popeye cartoons from the, uh, from the early 30s, I think, uh, you see they've got those really cool thick and thin lines that look like uh, brush strokes and that's that's what's so nice okay and that's actually pretty good um i don't know that it would show up that much because you know it's uh his head's going to be black so there's not a whole lot of point in doing it outside there but uh, down there it looks pretty good so the muzzle's good to go so i'll hide the muzzle 
And uh, maybe I'll do his smile because that is right on top. So I add a new layer, call it smile. And I'll once again, go back to the pen tool. Now I don't want a fill on this. I don't, uh, I, I just want the black strokes. I'm gonna leave that alone. Since the white fills to the front, click on none. So back to my pen tool, click here and click and drag there. You see, you just have to keep going around until you get it about right. And this, this is an experiment, of course. So that's pretty good. Uh, it looks like I might need to, to put that little corner of his smile there. I'm going to draw that as a separate line. So to get out of this, I'll go ahead and hit, hit return, and that'll take me out of that. Now, I, I need to deselect uh, for just a moment before I start drawing the next one, because otherwise it's going to think I want to continue that shape. I don't. So I'm going to click off with just clicking on the regular selection tool. There we go. And now that it's deselected, I can draw that other shape. Now, I want to make sure that I don't get so close that I land on that one. I just want this one down here, maybe. So I'm going to click there, click and drag there. That is pretty good. Now, I mean, it may now look good, but we're about to thicken that up using, you probably guessed it, the width tool. So with that selected, I'll bring that out just a tiny bit. It's pretty good. See, that makes them look a little happier. And I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of the smile. I'm going to go to the, um, go back to that width tool. And I'm imagining it's probably going to be thicker down on this side, maybe somewhere down here. So I'm going to click and drag, just very slightly make this very subtle. There we go. That's nice. So uh, I'm going to let go of that. And let's just see how it's working together so far. We're going to toggle our visibility. Oh, it, see. You see how much nicer that is already. I mean, if you look at the original uh, edges that are so pixelated, even though, of course, we know that this is um, very much uh, just a preview, but we already get a good idea about how much nicer this is going to look when we're done. So we'll go ahead and hide the rest of our layers. Um, I think this might be a good time to go on to the eyes because of course you see how this stacks up the eyes are going to be on one layer and then the nose is in front of that now the eyes are also nice now you notice even back in the 1920s they had already figured out in fact this might, i believe this is might even be the 19 teens that this was created you you see that they figured out cartoon perspective if you're showing a character in a sort of a three-quarter view as we call this it's not quite a profile not quite full frontal but a three-quarter view is really nice because it gives you that <clears throat> sort of a sort of a uh, an idea of perspective, and you notice that this eye is bigger than the other eye. So because supposedly it's closer, and and this one's turned just a little bit more to us, so they get that idea across even that far back. So let's go ahead and make a new layer for his eyes. So again, I'm just new layer, double clicking to rename it eyes. And here is where I don't really think I need the pen tool with this. I think I'm going to go ahead and use the ellipse tool to draw this. And you see this is tucked away under the rectangle tool if, unless you have changed it. It's right there. So I'm going to grab the ellipse tool and I could go to default fill and stroke, but I want to see what I'm doing a little bit better. So I'm going to leave it with no fill and a black stroke. So here we go. And uh, what you want to do, where you want to see you're starting to draw, is um, a, one of my students told me recently she couldn't understand why whenever she'd start drawing, uh, if, I, if I start drawing here, see, it's going to throw it down a little bit to the uh, lower right than where I want it. So what you want to do is look where the top is and where the side is and where there's sort of an intersection there. That's about where you want to start. And we can always move that around later. But see how nicely that is almost just right. So again, at this point, I'm just going to use my arrow on my keyboard to get that just right. Uh, it looks like it's almost, it's slightly egg shaped. So what I might need to do is use my direct selection tool at this point. Remember the Selection tool selects an entire object. The direct selection tool selects something within that object. So I'm going to grab this, 
going to drag this handle over just a bit to the left, and I'm going to do the same thing with the other. Because you see, we've got almost a sort of an odd egg shape here. So again, with this lower anchor point selected, I'm going to drag just slightly to the right, and that looks pretty good. That's not too bad. I might I might bring that in just a little bit. Oops, you got to be careful though, because you don't want it to mess up the top. If you select one, you notice you can just adjust one, but you have to be really careful. So I might need to come to back down just a bit. I might have overdone that. There we go, that's, that's pretty good. There we go, okay. So that one's pretty good. Uh, and again, before I go adding the, um, the, the white fill to that, I wanna get the, uh, get the eye, the, the pupil. And this is back when they had those sort of what I call those Pac-Man eyes. Uh, there's a couple of ways you could draw this. Um, I'm probably just going to use the pen tool for now. I'm going to click up here, click and drag. Wow, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to come back and fix that. That's all right. So click and drag there. And I might be able to, let's, let's see what happens if I just click immediately on that without holding down the option key. It actually worked okay. So sometimes you can get away with it. Okay, you can see it's, it looks a little lopsided here. So that's when I'm gonna come back with my direct selection tool. Bring that back up. I actually just drag this whole point over. We'll see what that does for us. That's pretty good. And bring it back up, maybe bring this one back in a little bit. That's pretty good. Um, I think I might want to bring that down just slightly. And you know, you're you're always kind of guessing that didn't work well. I'm gonna undo. Control Z or Command Z, best friend in the world. Um, so that, you know, I think it looks like this might need to come out a bit. So I might actually add another point and use my arrow key to bring that up. That looks a little bit better. I'm liking that a little better. So much I might do it to the other side. Talk about being nitpicky, right? That's pretty good. I think I'm liking that. Okay. So um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this. I'll go ahead and fill this by swapping these around. And remember, because I drew this shape after I drew this shape, this one, even though they're on the same layer, this shape is going to be stacked in front of that one. So that's one of the reasons I wasn't worried about uh, coloring that just yet. So I'm going to option drag, which is one of my favorite tricks. Uh, you simply select your object and immediately you hold down the option key on your keyboard and you can drag it whichever direction you want and it makes a copy. Now, one of the things you see though, because of that perspective, however subtle, is it's gonna be a little bit too big, but that's okay, we're gonna shrink that down. I'll show you a quick trick to do that. So as soon as I let go, Remember, that was the option key. Uh, it shows me where it is, but I'm having a little trouble seeing that, so I might need to swap my colors back again. There we go. So now with the selection tool still here, uh, if you hold down your shift key, and you see when I float over the edge, it gives me that uh, that double arrow. That means it's going to resize it. Now I'm holding down shift, which keeps it proportional. If you don't hold down shift, you know, you see it, it'll, you'll squash or stretch, which you may or may not want. Uh, I'm shrinking it down, holding down the shift key. That's pretty good, but let me see. And you also notice if I try to select it by clicking in the empty area, it won't let me. I have to select on the path for that to work. So I might, that actually, that's not bad. Scoot that over just once, maybe, maybe, maybe sh just shrink it just a bit uh, horizontally. I'm pretty happy with that. So with that in that point, now I think it's safe to come back over here and swap my fill and stroke just like that. All right. Um, I could try the same with this one, but you see how different that shape is. 
So I don't think I'm going to use my option drag trick here. I think I'm going to just go ahead and draw a new shape with a pen tool. So I'm going to click here, click and drag there. Whoops, see what's happening. See, if I keep this up, I won't be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to come back and swap those around. There we go. So, eh, you know, that's looking a little odd, but uh, that might be one of those things I just have to fix after I draw it. So I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to click and drag here, and I'll add another point there later. I'll click and drag there, completing my shape. And that's not bad. It's a little lumpy, so I'm going to fix that with my direct selection tool. So I'll click there, maybe drag that up just a tiny bit. Maybe the same thing there, because you see that's what I'm trying to match is this little shape they have here. That's pretty good. Might bring that up. Let me see how, how that would look. That's pretty good. This is still a little lumpy, so I'm going to try to smooth that out just slightly that's that's not bad now this is almost too much of a point than i like uh i might need to add another point with the pen tool so just to see i'm going to click remember i'm looking for that little plus sign maybe bring that up to give me my more of a curve there back to the direct selection tool there we go and at a certain point, you know, you're just probably trying to be too much perfectionist. And I think I'm reaching that point now. So I'll stop. Pretty good. Whoops. And I say that. Maybe back one more. Okay. That's pretty good. Now, uh, what I'm going to do, go ahead and fill both of these. Uh, so you can fill something uh, more than one at a time. Uh, I'm going to drag across here. So you see I'm going to select actually both of these two, right? And I'm going to click on my default fill and stroke. Whoops, I sort of suspected that might have happened. Looks like we lost one of the pupils. And that is because, if you remember, these are stacked in the order that you draw them. So because I drew the white shape before I drew the second pupil, it's got stuck behind there. But it's pretty easy to fix. Now remember, we're still on the eyes layer. I'm going to cut. And I'm going to select both eyes by holding down shift. I'm going to, I can click on this pupil, hold down shift, click on the second one. Now here's a nice little trick. I can go to uh, edit, paste in back. So you can paste in front or paste in back. And it's going to paste in the exact same position, uh, you know, say X or Y position, but it's going to be stacked behind the pupils, which is what we want. So I'm going to go to edit, paste, and back. And you see the shortcut for that is command B or control B for paste and back. For paste in front, it's command F or control F. So I'm going to go to paste and back. There we go. That's nice. Um, again, because this is going against the black outline of his face, I really don't see much of a need to, to go to any trouble uh, thickening the outline. So I'll probably leave those alone on this layer. So the eyes are pretty good. If you just want to take a quick peek how he's coming together very nicely. Um, we can just show all our layers by toggling visibility. And all we really need now is the nose and the whiskers. We could probably get away with doing that on a single layer. So I'm going to make new layer. Call this nose. And as you probably guessed already, I'm going to use the ellipse tool. I'm going to flop or swap my fill and stroke. And I want, an, I want no stroke on this. So I'm going to click to bring the stroke to the front and then click on none. Okay, now when I draw, I might notice it's at the wrong angle. His, it's tilted just slightly. So I'm gonna try to keep that in mind. I'm gonna click to drag that just like so. Now this is kind of nice. You see, with I don't even have to go to the selection tool. If I float over it, it gives me the option I can either resize it by clicking on those handles, or in this case, it goes to a one on the edge. I'm going to just drag that to try to get about the angle that Felix's nose is at. And that's pretty, pretty good. I might need to, whoops, that's not quite what I wanted. There we go. That's what I was looking for here. Pretty 
pretty good. Unless now I might need to get my move tool or my uh, selection tool to position that. That is not bad. Let's see. Let's see if that's about right. That's pretty darn close. Okay. So I'm going to get, I think the whiskers are very subtle. So I might even use those on the same layer. That might be all right. You can do that however you like, but I'll, that's what I think I'll do. Come over here, click on that. And of course I'm gonna swap that around like so. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. You see, I just deselected really quick. Looks like he's got a tiny one down here. I'm just deselecting and one over here, one or two over here, actually. So if he's got two, remember, you could also do this. You can simply uh, remember that option drag trick. I told you were all drag. You can just simply drag in a new place. And then if you want to rotate it slightly, you can do that. So that's kind of nice. And I might, because these are by themselves, I think I might, um, I think I might give them just a little bit of thickness to make them a little more interesting. So I'll drag this one on this end, click and drag there, there, and there. Let me see if I can fix this little thing I did right there. I accidentally put that gap on his nose. Let me see if I can't close that back up. There we go. That's a little better. So that might have been that might have been another way to do those little eyes, but. Uh, I think for our purposes, Felix is done. Let us show what we've got. Let me toggle the visibility on all of these. And look at that. I might need to move these over just slightly. Ta-da, there we go. Okay, let's zoom back and see how our Felix looks. Look at that, isn't that nice? Now, um, it actually looks like it might not be a bad idea for me to fix this eye. And I think there's just one more thing I'm gonna do and we're gonna be done. Uh, after that, I'm going to click on the eye on that underlying shape and go back to my width tool. There we go. And just thicken it up just slightly. There we go. That's pretty good. Didn't, didn't need too much. And I said there was one other thing I wanted to do, and we're going to do these with the eyes. Uh, I'm going to hide this other stuff just for a moment so you can see what I'm talking about. So uh, if you decide that you need, something needs to move together, uh, because see now if I tried to move one of these, of course, um, it's just gonna move that one object. So if you want to group things so that they move as a group and you don't accidentally separate them, I'm going to click and drag to select all of this. That's why I hid and or locked the rest of my layers. So with that, I'm gonna hit Command G which is the shortcut for group. And if you forget that shortcut, you simply go up to object, group or ungroup if you decide that you made a bad idea uh, there. So group and see now if I select, I can click off to deselect. And now when I drag them, they, they go together. All right, so let's look at Felix. All right, and I'm gonna to toggle, uh, in fact, let's do this. I'm going to temporarily, let me go ahead and save. I should have saved this much sooner. And remember, I'm saving this inside the same folder where I put this source image so that they don't get separated and, and lose that link. You wanna do that before. Uh, that's one of the reasons I told you that up front. So I'm gonna hit save. And all that stuff looks good, okay. Now, now that I've saved it, I can meddle with it just a bit. Uh, one of the things I wanted to show you is uh, just this last item is how if, uh, for instance, now Felix, of course, was done in black and white. If you wanted to change your colors, the swatches are a really nice, easy way to do that. Um, now, uh, because these are grouped, if I applied a color right now, see, it doesn't know because they have different fills and different strokes. Uh, that's why we were seeing those uh, question marks. But um, if I was to apply something, it would fill and stroke everything the same color. So what I wanna do instead to use my swatches, um, there is a group selection tool hidden underneath your direct selection tool. And that's nice because what happens, see if you click on it, I click on it once and I click again, 
The first time you click on it, it selects just that object within the group. If you click on that same object again, it selects the entire group or the next, um, the next group in that hierarchy. So you could have a group within a group within a group and so on. Um, so what I'm gonna do now though, is I just wanna select one eye just so that you can see how you can apply color. Even though Felix is in black and white, I know some of your projects will obviously require color. So I wanna change this the color of his eye. I'm gonna to click to bring the fill to the front and maybe we'll just make it a really nice light blue just to see what that looks like. Interesting, maybe that's a night nice scene, I don't know. But I'll do the same thing to the other eye. Now here's another nice, nice thing in case you've, you've used a custom color and you for, or you forget which one in the, uh, that it was, what I can do is I can select this eye Come over here to the eyedropper tool. So while this eye is selected, click on the eyedropper tool, and then I click on this eye, it's going to pick and apply that same color. That's rather nice. Okay. Uh, I think I like him better with his original colors, though, because that's Felix. He's black and white, and that's okay. So I'm going to click on that. Um, back on my white swatch. Click on this one. Back on my white swatch, and we have Felix. One other quick thing, and then we'll be done. I'm going to save. Uh, let's say that we wanted to group his whole head. Uh, I would drag over the entire area, Command G to group that. So now, you know, if I select one, I select everything. And let's look real quick how much of a difference you get. This is why. Right there is the very reason why uh, sometimes it's nice to use um, vector art instead of Photoshop, because if you have an image that, uh, that you've tried to zoom up or you know, you've grabbed it off the internet, or you know, it's not gonna look that great. It's gonna be sort of this mosaic with all these pixelated edges. With vector art, watch what happens. I'm gonna hold down Shift to make a proportional scale. And you see, no matter how big, you scale that up, you still have those nice crystal clear edges. Um, also, one other quick trick I'll show you is, uh, let me hold down Shift. So I'm gonna drag Felix's head over here. I'm gonna hold down Shift and Option. Oops, sometimes you have to hold those two down and click a second time, because when you hold down Shift, it deselects it. So you get the idea, it's practice. Hold down Shift and Option, drag it down. Now what happens if you hit Command D? Command D will duplicate the last action that you did. So you can make as many copies as you want and they're all gonna be the exact same distance as their predecessor, okay? And of course, I'm gonna undo because I think one Felix is enough for the world. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial with a very simple cartoon character. Uh, I'd like to see what you do with it. And of course, uh, my students particularly, you will be doing this exact project. So I look forward to seeing uh, what you're gonna do, which character you're gonna pick for this project. Uh, so thanks again so much for joining me. I hope to see you all again soon. And that you, of course, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye, happy cartooning.